Okay, as I say, let's, uh, let's do this. A um, couple of seconds here. Make sure that the page is up. Make sure I got my notes in front of me. All right, uh, 3.05. Okay, not so bad. Uh, hello, everyone. This is uh, Dwight Woods, uh, Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and this is uh, I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast number 16. Let me clean my glasses here. Um, this is the one all about the different so-called, or the so-called different interpretations of uh, Jeet Kune Do. Um, I make the inverted uh, comma thing on interpretations because I, I gotta stress right at the beginning, interpretation is not my word. Uh, this actually came out of another discussion that I had online about what might make um, one Jeet Kune Do instructor more qualified than the other, right? Okay, oh wait, let me not forget. So this is uh, today's uh, Bruce Lee shirt, All right? One, in time to come when I do that, it'll be because we're, we're sponsored by people or something, right? So I'm using, um, I'm using a, a Bruce Lee quote for this, uh, because for the past couple of broadcasts, you might, you might remember that we, um, we, we took a look at different sayings, right? And so I, I saw this one and I thought that it would be particularly appropriate for, um, for, for today's uh, discussion. So it says, as far as other styles or schools are concerned, take no thought of who is right or wrong or who is better than, be not for or against. Um, for in the landscape of spring, there is neither better nor worse. The flowering branches grow naturally, some long and some short. Right, so obviously when this was written, it served to contrast, I guess, between Jeet Kune Do and, and other arts at the time. But uh, obviously I've adapted it to refer to the different uh, Jeet Kune Do approaches. Um, any discussion of the interpretations of Jeet Kune Do would probably have to start with the so-called differences between original Jeet Kune Do and Jeet Kune Do concepts. But so varied is the art and so varied are the approaches used by different people that that's why I think people might actually end up believing that they're like different types of, of Jeet Kune Do. Um, so a huge disclaimer right at the beginning, I have no issues with whatever it is that other JKD people are doing out there. So if I happen to mention certain people and I do not mention others, please don't infer from that that I'm endorsing one person over another or endorsing one approach um, over another, right? Um, so what do I mean by the different approaches? So I'll tell you a story and that'll set the tone for, for what, what comes later on. So my first live experience of Jeet Kune Do was 1983 in California at uh, CMA, the California Martial Arts Academy. So I get there on Sunday afternoon and um, after I put my, my stuff away, you know, store baggage and, and that kind of stuff, I go downstairs into the courtyard where everybody was kind of sitting around talking. And um, after a little while of this, Tim Tackett uh, gets up and says, okay, enough of this. And he drags out the duffel bag that's full of focus mitts and, um, and a bunch of us take off to a training room and we start doing these focus mitt drills. So that was my official, unofficial, or, or unofficial official introduction to Jeet Kune Do training, right? Uh, Tim Tackett and some boxing and kickboxing drills. So that's Sunday afternoon. On Monday morning, um, the seminar, the, the camp officially starts and I get my first glimpse of Dan and Asano and Cass Magda. And um, I, I, I freak out because I'm like, okay, I wanna move, I wanna learn to move exactly the way these two guys move. And um, so it was like two decisions, right? One that I wanted to, to learn to move like them. And then the other decision was that, well, I'm probably going to be doing this for the rest of my life. Um, it, it, it was, we were training Kali, right? And um, I'll show you something. I got a, a bunch of, uh, of um, not handouts, but um, props for you guys. So this is, and I'm still trying to learn how to do this thing the right way. Hold on a second. There we go. March 1976, Fight in Arts, right? So if you see here, it says... Um, 
Jeet Kune Do, Beyond Bruce Lee, right? So in this article, they were talking about, I'll just show you, I'll show you two things, right? Uh, let me get it right. The continuing saga, right? Or the continuing story of Jeet Kune Do through Danny and Asano. And then here in the final page of the article, right, is a thing on, uh, where is it? Filipino stick fighting technique. And you see where it says they're part of Jeet Kune Do curriculum. So this is 76, right? So I'd had this magazine for seven years before I went out to, to LA. And uh, I knew that Dan Inzano was doing uh, Filipino Kali in, in the JKD curriculum. So I, I wanted to train with the person that I considered to be um, the, the guy to go to for, for Bruce Lee's uh, stuff, right? So naturally, I'm impressed by Inasano's movement. Uh, but after all, he's Dan Inasano. He's like the living legend, right? But the reason why I was impressed with Cass Magda is because Cass was a mere mortal. So, uh, <laughs> so Cass becomes one of my uh, role models. At that camp, I got to see uh, Paul Vunak in action. I got to see... Um, the Kali, uh, the Kali Academy demo team. So that was people like Freddie Jin and uh, Jeff Chun, and I think even Blaze Lung was uh, was in that group. So that's 1983. So sometime after this, I'm back on a solo trip out to LA. Right, not for camp. This is when I just go out to to LA and visit the the Inosano Academy. And um, this is the first time I get to see Chris Kent in action, and I go, oh. That's where Cass gets his movement from. Because it looked to me as if um, Cass had been influenced. And I think, I think I'm correct in that, that he's influenced because, after all, Chris was his uh, senior when Cass came, came on board in like 79 or, or what have you. Right? So now I've become aware that different people can look similar in their, let's call it style, because they have a similar background, right? So I'll elaborate on that um, a, a little bit. So let's, let's break this down. If you're from the Seattle era, you can be more steeped in what we call Jun Fan Gung Fu. And as far as I know to this day, that is what the Seattle group uh, calls itself or refers to, to the art. And uh, I imagine that they have kept that name because one, that's what Bruce Lee certified Taki Kimura in. And I think that being a, an extremely honorable person, um, Sibak Taki has probably never sought to, um, to change the name of, of, of whatever it is that he was given uh, authority to teach. But I'm not well versed enough in the Seattle uh, era to, to tell you, um, you know, to, to comment on it with authority. I am, I'm, and like, similarly, I don't know what modifications, if any, they have made over the years, but I wouldn't be surprised to learn that they have because through Bruce Lee's own writings, you hear him say that he tried to keep both Taki Kimura in Seattle and James Lee in Oakland um, updated, right, when he, when he would visit them from, from being down south in, in Los Angeles, right? Which kind of reminds me, because right, I was reading something earlier today when I was doing the research for this, um, Dan Inasano did something similar because... I think this might have been 1974, maybe, when the only place to find Jeet Kune Do really was in Los Angeles. And um, Larry Hartzell was the only person outside of LA authorized to teach Jeet Kune Do, and he was in North Carolina. And so Dan and Asano used to go over to North Carolina to keep Larry Hartzell updated, right? So it's kind of similar to Bruce Lee keeping Taki Kimura and uh, James Lee updated, right? Um, I know that in Oakland, I'm pretty sure that they refer to it as, um, as Jeet Kune Do, right? Um, I think one, what, well, obviously one difference between Seattle and Oakland is that the, um, the pioneer in Oakland is no longer alive and, and guiding the, the program there. Um, again, I'm not well enough, you know, versed well enough in the Oakland method to comment on, on that with authority. My lineage, of course, is, is Dan and Asano and Los Angeles. So we'll talk um, extensively, let's say, about that group, right? So if we look at the list of legends who were around during Bruce Lee's time, and you look at what they have taught over the years, I think that what you're seeing is not 
interpretations of Jeet Kune Do. I think instead it's more appropriate to use words like expression or maybe even preferences, right? So here's an example of what I mean. So let, we talked about the, the late Larry Hartzell. As, as I remember it, Larry was first known as a kicker, but then he had some kind of an accident that I think um, affected his hip, and so he was now limited in his ability to kick and what have you. And I think that's how he ended up gravitating toward the grappling. Plus, he was, he was a big guy, and, and from what I've heard, Bruce Lee um, liked to use him for the grappling, and so Larry ended up becoming known as the premier grappler, um, the original premier grappler in the JKD clan. Um, I trained with Larry in Los Angeles a couple of times, um, in New York, uh, here in Miami, I think. But I believe that most of the people got their introdu introduction to him during the, um, the 10 years or so that, uh, that Vic Payne ran the Smoky Mountain Camp which is not something that I attended because I do not camp, right? Um, so if we take a look at, at, the, at the Hartzell legacy, so here we go, all right? We have uh, Jeet Kune Do, Entering to Trap into Grappling, Volume 1, and then we have Volume 2, Counterattack, Grappling Counters and Reversals, right? So in, in this one, You'll see basic kicking and punching used as an entry, then bridge contact is established, and then the trapping from Wing Chun or Kali, and then you finish up with a grappling move from, um, you know, let's say uh, Japanese Jiu Jitsu or Filipino Duma, right? That's volume one. Volume two, the counters and reversals, to me, that harkens to what we were talking about last week. Remember when, um, when I, w I was talking about learn the technique, practice the technique, add the counter, add the recounter. So I think that in volume two of the grappling book, that's um, Larry Hartzell applying that um, concept, let's call it, right? Even though it's a Kali training principle from how, from how I remember, but here Larry is applying it in Jun Fan uh, Jeet Kune Do. Right, so since we're on grappling, let me tangent off here for a second, and I'll tell you that there are people who started their Jeet Kune Do grappling in that manner, right? Like, um, let's say, influenced um, by, by Larry Hartzell. And then some gravitated towards mixing, let's say, their Jun Fan or their Wing Chun trapping, or maybe even their, um, their Kali trapping, um, to using Penjak Silat technique for their, um, for their grappling finishes, right? And then th there, were, there were some that moved on even further and started using more Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or, or Japanese shoot wrestling. But still, they're applying the concept of adding the counter and the recounter. Because when you hear them talk about, you, you'll hear certain people say that in the, old, in the early days of Jeet Kune Do, um, Jeet Kune Do grappling, that um, you, know, you would apply the lock or the takedown or whatever, but we didn't contest it. Right, and I think that that's why the the BJJ and the Shudo probably became so popular with some in the JKD clan because it was being contested. But for me, that element of um, is contestation a word, right? Was always there if you applied the add the counter and the add the recounter principle, right? Anyhow, to get back to um, to Larry Hartzell, actually to Larry Hartzell and Tim Tackett, because sometimes what some people are not aware of is that. Um, Tackett's name doesn't appear here because he was under contract to another uh, publishing company at the time. But by the time Volume 2 came out, right, um, Tackett's name was there. If you, even though Tim was a co-author on, on the grappling books, he has not written another book on Jeet Kune Do grappling, right? Tim went on to, to author what? Everybody knows, right? Um... He went on to author with Chris Kent, Jeet Kune Do Kickboxing, and uh, Jeet Kune Do, uh, the textbook, right? Jun Fan Jeet Kune Do, the textbook. And um, T Tim Tackett is probably best known for his work in the, um, the Jeet Kune Do Wednesday Night Group, right? But he has also written with, um, with Bob Bremer, right? This series on... Let me get them here. 
I hope I don't throw anything down on the floor like I usually do. All right, so we have, we have here uh, Chinatown Jeet Kune Do, right? Volumes one and, and volume two, right? So these are written Tim Tackett with, uh, with Bob Bremer. And they, they, they also have a series of, of DVDs um, from Budo Video, and then they're the JKD Lessons uh, DVDs. And if you look at the material in the Chinatown books, then you can see it's, it's a more in-depth approach to what was first exposed in the JKD kickboxing and, and the, the Jeet Kune Do textbook, right? So, why? Because as you continue in your JKD practice, you evolve. And Tim Tackett has said that when he hooked up with Bob Bremer, there were some things that he had learned that Bremer was able to help him improve on because of the time that Bremer had spent in one-on-one -on -one sessions with, uh, with, with C. Joe uh, Bruce Lee, right? Okay, so now we'll move to uh, Chris Kent, right? So Chris has been prolific himself, right? Uh, let's go back to the 1976 um, article. If I can pull this off, right? So... Here where it says, oh man, I can't see it. But anyhow, in here, he's not known as Chris Kent. He's known as Chris Nuds, which was um, his birth name. But uh, from what I understand, you know, people always had a problem pronouncing his name or maybe even spelling his name. And so at one point, Chris changed his name to the area of England that he's from, uh, Kent, England. And now he's known as Chris Kent. Chris has been uh, prolific. There is the 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 textbook and um, the kickboxing book, but also Chris did Jeet Kune Do uh, A to Z, or A to Z, as he might call it, right? <laughs> as I call it sometimes too, right? Uh, Jeet Kune Do A to Z, volume one and volume two. Um, this was, uh, let's see, 87, I think, was the kickboxing book, and then 89 was the textbook. There was also, this was how long ago it was, there was a series called Dynamic Jeet Kune Do, which came out on VHS. So those of you who don't know what VHS is, look it up. Uh, I used to play VHS tapes in a thing called a VCR, right? Um, he did, um, the, 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 the copies that I showed you are actually the reprints, the 2008 um, re redoings of the kickboxing book and the, and the textbook, right? Um, if you look through Chris's materials, you'll see that it covers mostly kicking and punching and trapping. But Chris, like Cass Magda that I mentioned before, right? Um, Chris was a model in the Jeet Kune Do grappling books. So obviously, um, he had a functional understanding of grappling, right? Cass is well known, uh, probably as well known for, for, for his Jeet Kune Do and his Filipino martial arts and his Indonesian uh, Penjak Sila. So I used to spend a lot of time with Cass in LA. Um, we've brought him out to Miami a couple of times and I've gone out to his school in Reseda um, a bunch of times, right? Um, another very popular uh, Jeet Kune Do, the, the, a late Jeet Kune Do instructor was um, Jerry Poteet, right? So Jerry Poteet produced um, Jeet Kune Do Secret, Volume 1 and uh, Volume 2, right? And uh, I, I, Poteet was the second student accepted into the, um, the, the Chinatown School, right? I think Daniel Lee was number one and Jerry Poteet was number two, right? So he's produced these and I think there's a DVD series of like eight videos. And again, you look at his material and it covers mostly kicking, punching, and trapping with an emphasis on self-defense, not so much a sport approach to, uh, to it, right? Um, I never met Jerry, but um, I know that he was so old school, he was one of the, the early clan members who got um, a instructor certificate in Serrata Escrima under uh, Angel Cabales, right? Uh, Ted Wong is another Los Angeles student who started at the Chinatown School, right, for a little bit and then became a private student of Bruce Lee's. Um, to the best of my understanding, Ted never had a school, but when he came out later as an instructor, I trained with him only once here in Miami 
And I remember thinking, oh my God, this guy moves just like Bruce Lee, right? Um, Ted produced uh, two uh, Bruce Lee fighting methods video with Richard Bustillo and his student, Terry Tom, Terry Tom has, I, t I talk about her, her books all the time. Um, uh, don't throw nothing down, Dwight. Hold on a second, folks. There we go. So, Terry Tom um, has done, this is her second book, Jeet Kune Do, The Arsenal of Self-Expression. The first book is uh, The Straight Lead, right? And I always uh, recommend that people pay uh, some attention to, to, to those books. Um, in, actually, let me read it to you, right? It's in the section on the five ways of attack, right? So they've got simple angle attack, attack by combination, um, and then I, I found it very interesting here what was said about, can I find it, can I find it? Immobilization attack, right? I won't read you the, the, the whole thing, right? I'll just um, read you the bottom part, right? Actually, no, so, so there's a part here where it says that um, the, two, the two most common forms of immobilization attack in JKD are hand immobilization and leg obstruction, right? The former is pretty inefficient and potentially dangerous, right? Most people trap first and hit later. Um, and so ultimately what they say is in either case, both leg and hand immobilizations are very passive ways of attack. You block first, you hit later. It's the way of attack that is least congruent with the JKD principles of directness and simplicity, right? So in, in these books, they don't spend very much time with, um, with the trapping aspect, right? Um, that's interesting because back in, in this article, right? Jeet Kune Do Beyond Bruce Lee, it says here that Bruce Lee um, substituted trapping hands for conventional blocking because he found blocking to be the least efficient method of countering attack, you see? But then years later in, in, in his evolution, Ted Wong ended up saying essentially the same thing about trapping hands, right? It being um, not as efficient a method for countering an attack. And I, I believe that uh, two things. One, I've heard that um, some of that is because by the time Bruce Lee and Ted Wong were training together, Bruce Lee himself may have been moving away from the, the trapping stuff. And I think probably, you know, Ted's mobility and striking were probably at such a level that he, he probably didn't ever need um, to, to trap, right? Okay, um, Paul Vunak. Paul Vunak is perhaps the most prolific of all the JKD guys and gals out there. Um, I met Paul in 1983, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I did a private lesson with him at that time. I trained with him the following year at CMAA, uh, 1984 in St. Louis. Then I trained with him again um, at a Neil Colliff seminar in, in New York. And uh, I brought him down to Miami uh, for a seminar at my school. Um, if I remember correctly, Paul's, um, Paul started producing videos in about 1986 or so, right? There was like, there was a single two hour video that covered a whole uh, vast uh, array of, of stuff. But, and then that was followed by the Panther production series, which was like five, no, six or seven videos covering kickboxing, trapping, wooden dummy, um, stick fighting, knife fighting attributes. So that's six. Ah, it was seven because there were two volumes of the kickboxing. That's what it was, right? Um, and then under his progressive fighting systems umbrella, that's where he was most prolific. I think he produced in the early days, there were like, there was a series of uh, 25 different videos. Then um, there, there was probably a few other series and what have you. I only know of two books by Paul, uh, 1991, Jeet um, uh, Kune Do, um, Jeet Kune Do, it's Concepts and Philosophies, and then 2001, Anatomy of a Street, uh, Anatomy of a Street Fight, right? I consider Paul to be one of the JKD guys who really popularized the blending 
of like Jun Fan Trappin with Kali Trappin, and also to be the guy who brought the Kali technique to the forefront with his emphasis on things like defanging the snake and destructions and the use of headbutts and also the use of kinomutai, which is the Filipino art of, um, of pinching and biting, right? Paul spent time in the early days of, of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with the Gracies, and so he's paid a lot of attention to grappling and ground fighting. Um, Bert Richardson out in, in, in Hawaii, he's another well-known instructor out of the, the Kali Academy days. Um, I don't remember exactly when I met him, but Bert was actually the first person to do a seminar for me in Miami. This was um, April, I think, of 1989. Uh, it was Sifu Dan and Simo Paula who were supposed to come to Miami, but what happened is Sifu Dan got an ear infection, and so his doctor wouldn't let him fly. So Bert came to Miami as an assistant for, um, for uh, the late Pendekar Paul de Tours, right? And so... Um, we brought him back to Miami at least two other times. And I used to see him all the time at the Inasano Academy and at the IMB, right? And Bert, like I just said, at one time was, was, was known as a, a huge uh, Penjak Silat uh, aficionado, right? He founded Jeet Kune Do Unlimited in 1992. And from what I recall, his first book was Jeet Kune Do Unlimited, um, a JKD concepts guidebook. And... Um, there was also a video series entitled Jeet Kune Do Concepts. That was like three or four videos. And that was followed by a second series called um, Defining Jeet Kune Do, where he went in, you know, more in depth into the, the JKD concepts, right? Bert's done four, four books, I think. So there was the concepts, right, right? Then there was, I had it here. Here we go, all right? There's Choke Em Out which is his 1998, no, 2007 book. And then most recently is um, whoop, See That for the Street, right? Which I think was done just a couple years ago. And then there's another book called In the Steps of uh, Bruce Lee, JKD Without Limits, right? Um, what one, one of the things ab about Bert is that what I like, what I love about him is that he's, he's very, very honest and um, he had a huge change of heart and change of mind when in Hawaii he started training with um, uh, Egan Inouye, I think, in, in the grappling. And uh, he also had a huge change of heart and change of mind uh, in the, the, the Dog Brothers uh, stick fighting, right? And so Bert then did another series of videos. There were two, right? There, there was the, the, the high performance series from Straight Blast Gyms. And then um, there was series one and two, if I remember correctly. Then there's his, um, his series called Science of Fight. And then, of course, he's got the, the entire um, collection of stuff that he does now at JKD Unlimited, right? Richard Bustillo, I mentioned him earlier on. Richard Bustillo was another Kempo guy who joined the Chinatown School, right? Went on into Inosano's backyard and then partnered with Sifu Dan to open up the Kali Academy, Right before, which ran for ten years, and then in 1984 um, they, that segued into the um, IMB. Right, um, Richard was a favorite at the the magazines. Right, Black Belt magazine and, and Inside Kung Fu loved him. Um, he did the the as I mentioned before the Fighting Method, Bruce Lee's Fighting Method video with Ted Wong, and they also produce in house videos for the IMB Academy. Right, Richard's background was. Western boxing, I think Kaju Kembo, I could be wrong, right? But he was, but I know for sure he was, he was what they called a, a, a big Hawaiian bruiser, right? And of course the Filipino arts, he was also into the shoot wrestling. Uh, he came to actually before 1989. We didn't host the seminar, but Richard was here in 1988 with Steve Martinez. And that was actually the first JKD seminar here in Miami. Then I trained with him. Um, a, a, a number of times because they would have camp at the IMB and then when he would come back to Miami I trained with him here um, towards the, the end Richard was very heavily into the Dose Paris Escrima also I believe 
Um, Ron Balicki is another well-known JKD guy. I, I think Ron is originally out of Chicago. I met him in 1988 at an Inosano seminar in Jamesville, Wisconsin. I'll never forget. I think it was August of uh, J uh, August of 1988, right? Ron's done a ton of videos, a ton of um, movie work, and he's a spokesperson for uh, Cold Steel Blades. So he's also done a very, very, very well done series um, on Jun Fan kickboxing, on trapping, on uh, Kali Sila empty hands, knife fighting. Um, and then he also has a complete Jun Fan Jeet Kune Do like instructor's uh, training um, video, right? Um, Ron has written... At, he's written maybe two books, but I didn't have time to look them up, right? Maybe I'll, I'll put those in, in the comments, right? And he's, he definitely has a bunch of um, knife fighting videos also, right? Uh, Eric Paulson is best known as, I guess, the founder of Combat Submission Wrestling, which grew out of his time spent with uh, Yuri Nakamura in, in Shoot Wrestling. Um, but I think a lot of people who might not know this, a lot of people would be very, very surprised to discover how adept at Jun Fan kickboxing and, and Jun Fan Kung Fu and Filipino martial arts, how adept uh, Eric Paulson is. It, 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 because it, like uh, Sifu Inasano says about Paulson, he's one genius, right? So I could go on and on naming numerous other JKD personalities. But if you've been listening then you will have heard that everybody had a similar origin, um, a similar origin story, whether or not it was the Chinatown school or the backyard, the, the Inosano backyard, or the Kali Academy, or the Inosano Academy, or maybe even any combination of, of those four locations, right? And then you'll notice that in presenting themselves and the art, to their students or to the public. They chose particular avenues of particular preferences. So some, people's find, some people find themselves best able to express themselves perhaps as a kickboxer, right? Or maybe as a street fighter. Some might emphasize self-defense over the sport aspect. Um, some taught privately while others had schools of, of different sizes, right? Um, some may have decided to focus more on the grappling aspects than other people did. But notice that just about everyone had at least a functional knowledge and ability in all four ranges of combat, right? Or as we call it, four skills of empty-handed combat, kicking, punching, trapping, grappling, right? So... I think what you have to realize then is that nobody is interpreting Jeet Kune Do. If what you mean by interpreting is that this guy has a different type of Jeet Kune Do from this guy, right? The path that they take to get there might be a little bit different, right? So obviously, Inosano and his people, they went into Muay Thai, for example. But of the people that I mentioned, right, thus far... As far as I know, Cass Magda, Bert Richardson, actually Bert and I tested for uh, Muay Thai instructorship at the Inosano Academy uh, together in 1991, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure Paulson uh, went into Muay Thai, Ron Balicki went into Muay Thai, Hartzell went into Muay Thai with Ajarn Chai, right? Um, okay, I got a break here. My old student, Tim... Pagonis is reminding me that Chad Stahelski, yes, uh, Tim, and that's one of my claims to fame that Chad, that I know Chad Stahelski personally. <laughs> it, for those of you who don't know, Chad Stahelski is, um, is the director of uh, the John Wick uh, movie series, right? He was Keanu Reeves' um, stunt double in the Matrix series. Okay, thanks for interrupting me so kindly, Tim. All right. Um, <laughs> When, uh, when it comes to Penjak Silat, like we mentioned before, right? Cass Magda, Ron Balicki, Eric Paulson, to, to a lesser degree, as far as I know, went into, um, went into uh, the, the Penjak Silat. When it comes to Filipino Kali, that's okay, Tim, I'm just kidding, right? When it comes to Filipino Kali, Jerry Poteet, Tim Tackett, Larry Hartzell, 
They all had certificates, I think, in the Sarada Escrima from uh, Angel Cabales, right? Chris, Chris Kent, obviously. Cass Magda, Richard Bustillo, obviously, right? Eric Paulson, Burt Richardson, Ron Balicki, Paul Vunak. Everybody went into the Filipino martial arts, even if ultimately they didn't emphasize it in their JKD training or their JKD teaching. The, in the shoot wrestling or the Brazilian jiu-jitsu approach to grappling, to the best of my knowledge, um, Tim Tackett, Jerry Poti, Chris Kent, Cass Magda, Ted Wong, they do not emphasize that approach in the exact same way that Eric Paulson or Burt Richardson or Paul Vunak or even maybe the late Richard Bastillo might have been known for it. And then Ron Balicki also because Ron was a shoot wrestling competitor trained by Yuri Nakamura. Right? So this does not make their Jeet Kune Do different. See, but at the beginning when I told you so varied are the approaches of the different people, this is what sometimes I think makes it confusing for a lot of people in, in the Jeet Kune Do. A lot of people would like to have Jeet Kune Do fit into this nice, neat package that um, doesn't challenge them for understanding. And that's not, that's not the Jeet Kune Do animal um, by, by any way, right? Okay, so um, let me close this by reading the Bruce Lee quote that we started with, but I'm going to insert some, some different words, right? So it says, as far as other Jeet Kune Do instructors are concerned, take no thought of who is right or wrong or who is better than. Be not for or against. For in the landscape of the acres of growth known as Jeet Kune Do, there is neither better nor worse. The flowering branches of Jeet Kune Do grow naturally, some more diverse with their material, some more streamlined in their approach. So, rewind the video, listen to that again. Everybody have a good evening. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, signing off. Take care.